how about student builds open source laptop in six months? I like it. This is actually the coolest thing. Why don't you run us through it? Because you might think, okay, you might think hearing that like, oh yeah, but like it probably sucks. No. What if I told you it's it didn't? Sick. Okay. Okay. Go, go, go. So I'm probably going to butcher the name, but it's Anyon, I think. It's A N Y O N underscore E. Uh, the specs are a 4K AMOLED display. Didn't skimp there at all. <laughs> sure. The second I saw that, I was like, oh, we're serious. Okay. Sure. Um, 16 sure. gigs of DDR4 RAM, an RK3588 SOC, which is, has a, an eight core ARM processor with GPU and NPU, which he points out in the video, an M.2 SSD of some capacity, Wi Fi 6, a 62.9 watt hour battery, which came out to about seven hours of battery life. Sick. Brian Huang. I hope I said that right. Sorry. Uh, a senior in high school, <laughs> mind completely blown, made an open source laptop from scratch he called the Enion. I think it's Enion. I originally read it and thought it was anyone, but then in the video, I think he says Enion. Uh, because Whatever. I'm just going to call it the super cool laptop that I can't believe a high school student so made. Sick. How we're, about that? We're not going to show the video here because you need to go watch it, but we'll talk yeah. about it a little bit. And Dan uh, will link it in the chat for you guys. Yeah. Uh, because AMD and Intel don't just give you, you know, CPUs and documentation. He instead went with that rock chip processor. And... Honestly, where he like really hooked me in the video was diving through the specs of that processor and why he wanted it and things he's going to do for it and stuff. Very, very cool. Um, a very expensive and complicated part of building a laptop are the IO interconnects. So Brian went with the friendly elect uh, SOM, which helps, uh, which has heaps of IO on board. Uh, we actually used the same board to make a DIY NAS last year. Uh, the next oh, problem. Oh yeah, that thing is so cool. Yeah. Like so cool. Yeah. The next problem was the display. You can watch the video, um, but uh, it was a huge pain in the butt. Yeah, that's this, the this TLDW. Is where, this is where, like, because he didn't skimp out because there was an option. Yeah. He could have just got an external laptop display, mounted it permanently, yeah. and then USB-C'd into the laptop and been like, don't worry about that. And that would have been way easier because the thing about mobile display standards and I really, man, I know I love the finger quotes, but I especially love it here. Is Byron. that? Oh, sorry. Is that they are the kinds of standards that nobody seems to be able to agree on, and it can it can just be it can be as simple as like a, the connector looks right and the receptacle <laughs> looks right, but if you plug them in, it just straight up won't work. And the, getting your hands on the wiring diagrams or anything can be an absolute nightmare. Woo. So working with like EDP displays is. It's super not the easiest thing in the world. Couple corrections already. My bad. Apparently it's Enion E. Cool. That makes sense. And it's Byron, not Brian. Uh, I'm going to use dyslexia as my excuse there. Uh, that uh, actually works. It is spelled right in the doc. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just read it wrong. Nice. Um, but yeah, the display portion was crazy because honestly, when I first saw it, I assumed he was just going to go that route. Right? Yeah. Just use the IO. Yeah, that would be easier. Make it easy. Yeah, but sad, no. sad magician in chat says calling that a standard is a saint like generosity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a mess. But yeah, the dis the display portion is super cool. Um, he also uh, designed the entire power system to allow for charge and discharge of the batteries. In total, it has sixty two point nine watt wow. hours of battery capacity and seven hours of battery life. Okay, that is so cool. Like handling lithium battery charging and discharging I, I, safely, especially is is not a high school project. Uh, that's so cool. This was a little above and beyond, I think. Uh, but he went ahead and made his own wireless keyboard with Cherry MX low profile switches and custom 3D printed keycaps. That's Look, where you know he's just having fun. When with you it. have when you have <laughs> f you levels of skill, then you just you gotta oh, yeah. flex it. Why you not? Gotta, Why not? You gotta you gotta flex it, brother. <laughs> um, Byron then designed his own CNC'd aluminum chassis and got it anodized. Uh, the hinge. Uh, for the screen uses framework hinges. That's cool. Conveniently available. Shout Makes out sense. framework, investment disclosure framework, yep. uh, but like just making parts available for their laptops. Love to see it. All said and done, it boots up faster than his M3 MacBook. He does like a drag race near the end of the video. It's That's cool. So cool. Um, I, I don't the, the same actual performance, but you know, it boots up quickly, which is sick. Um, and there's a line in here that says, I suspect Apple had a bit more of an R&D budget. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Uh, this um, is a note from Alex Clark from our team. He says, seriously, watch the video. 
I learned things about how laptops are made, and I think I have, and I'm going to editorialize here, I agree, Alex, an above average understanding of laptops. Yeah, I learned a lot, uh, to the point where like I'm planning on watching the video again because there was parts in there that I thought were like really interesting and I want to absorb it better. Okay, now our first discussion question, I am hijacking this completely because you and I have talked many times yes. about building your own laptop and how it kind of used to be a thing. Yep. Like you could buy a bare bones laptop kits. and you could you could pick a, a socketed CPU and RAM and storage. And in the case of the one that I, yes, DIY'd for myself for first year university, you could configure it with alternative battery packs. So mm -hmm. I had like a, like a caboose ass battery pack that stuck out of the bottom of my laptop and actually put it up at an incline. No, no, not that one. That was the Acer Aspire one that extended battery I got later. Sorry, no, this one came out the back straight. Um, it was an M5NE, like bare bones Asus laptop. Anyway, um, and you and I have talked about it and we've kind of talked about how like that's, that's dead. You know, everything is so integrated now that building your own laptop is dead, will stay dead. The fact that companies like NVIDIA are actively hostile towards it by trying to kill the MXM um, like mobile graphics card standard over and over and over again at every possible opportunity makes it dead. Guess not. Except someone's senior high school project is just gonna demolish that. Except here's something that I didn't see coming. Instead of having modularity, Right and a generic chassis and socketable CPUs and socketable RAM and and socketable storage or you know slottable storage or whatever right so we saw all of that go tightly integrated and we lamented the death of a, a you know DIY laptop but then it got so much more integrated that now you could take a full system on a chip or system on a module in this case and build a chassis around it and holy crap, you can build your own laptop again. And then now that Windows on ARM is a thing, theoretically, like you, you, you could run like full fat freaking Windows and, and, not, and hand it to someone and have them not even notice, right? And like, okay, eventually someone would probably, you know, notice they go to run an app that the emulation doesn't work for or whatever else. But I'm, I'm just saying like, this could be a computer that you could hand to your auntie and she could just use and you've freaking built it. Yeah. This yeah. is so cool. I, I, I just, I didn't see this coming. And honestly, like, yeah, you don't, you don't have crazy GPU power. Like he's talking about some of the limitations he played. Uh, this isn't yeah. in the notes, but I'm just trying to remember from last night. So I might say some things that are slightly wrong because I watched this video, but um, he was, he was playing Minecraft on it. Like it can play. And I know, yeah, Minecraft it plays on your phone, it, but it so can, what? it can play games. So what? That's so cool. A That's big, where the hardware's at now. A big flex for him, as far as I could tell, was the NPU more. I don't, I don't feel personally like he really made this thing as a gaming machine. And not every device that you have has to be a gaming machine. He's got that NPU in there. He can do some AI stuff with it. That's cool. Um, it's, it's highly functional. A lot of like what I use, like my, my work desktop, my worst de desktop just needs a functional CPU and some RAM. Like I'm on the browser all the time. Um, yeah, but does it play crisis? Yeah, all know. this is so cool. Second discussion question. Should we throw some money behind a V2? At the end, we're listed as one of the inspirations for the project. That's sick. I mean, sure. He did shout out the NAS in the video. That's so cool. When yeah, no, I mean. The, the psalm. Yeah, uh, uh, Dan, do you mind just uh, throwing a... Uh, we, don't, we don't know if he wants that. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, we have, we have absolutely no idea. And he might not even want to do a V2. I mean, he... It's clearly might be moving super, on to something else. Clearly a super talented kid. I'm sure he could figure out something else cool to to create. But like, I would I would absolutely be down to do like a like a like a small sponsorship. Or I mean, even if he's just like, yeah, could I just like get a mod mad and get a bunch of like LTT gear oh, or sick. like you know whatever of else course. or you know, dude, I'd yeah, sure, cool. This is awesome. I I, I I I'm pretty sure I commented on the video. Like this is this is the type of stuff that I really like finding on YouTube. Yeah. Like this is this is the the like little rewarding nugget that YouTube's like you watched a bunch of garbage that I sent you. Here's a here's the thing that you want now. Um I I really hope he keeps making content of some yeah. kind or almost. just keeps making cool stuff like if yeah. someone like an Apple or a Dell or framework Dude, somebody's got to pick this guy if up. If somebody if somebody picks this guy up, then I just I want to see him I, I want to see him create something amazing. Uh, Dan, if you could just fire it over to, I think, uh, Sean C. 
is handling like sponsorships and sense. stuff like that. So just fire that over there that I, I consider it green lit for us to, you know, do something if he, if he wants to do something. So cool though. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, the video, especially cause it's his, his second video, I think video was hosted really well. I think he has creator chops. He could go that route or yeah, if like a framework or someone else wants to pick him up, yeah. this, this dude's going to kill it.